starters, if you could just introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Jeff Zeig, and I'm the director of the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix. Uh, to begin with, could you tell us how you were first introduced to hypnosis? Sure. I was in my master's program at San Francisco State, and I had an opportunity to do an internship at a community hospital inpatient unit. And the director of the hospital, a psychiatrist, Charles O'Connor, was one of my supervisors, and I asked him if, as far as supervision was concerned, could he teach me something about hypnosis? It seemed interesting to me. And he said, well, come to my office on Saturday, and I will do a session with you. So with some trepidation, I went over to Charlie O'Connor's office, and I was nervous. I was scared because I didn't know anything about hypnosis. And I was unconsciously drumming my fingers on the arm of the chair, and Charlie, who knew something about Erickson, did a utilization technique. He said, Jeff, drum your fingers more. Drum them faster. Watch as your fingers slow down. And suddenly, this was so fascinating to me, I didn't have the word utilization in my vocabulary. But I said, you know, okay, well, that was, you know, really interesting. And what should I read to learn more about this? And he said, read Milton Erickson. And I said, who? He said, well, Milton Erickson, and the only book that was out at that time was Advanced Techniques of Hypnosis and Therapy. There was no other books really about Erickson other than this, com this compendium that Jay Haley had put together. And it was a very expensive book at the time, and I was a very poor graduate student, but I ordered the book, and it stunned me. This was light years beyond anything that I had conceptualized as psychotherapy. And so I immersed myself in that book and started learning about Erickson. And then I used uh, trying to understand utilization, which has become a foundation in my approach to, to hypnosis. Most of my writing over the last 10 years has been explications of various aspects of Erickson's utilization technique. And utilization in Ericksonian therapy, utilization is really the foundation of solutions. So all of Erickson's cases are steeped in utilization. And uh, then I became uh, fascinated with Erickson, and then I started my uh, excursion, which has now been some 35 years, into learning about the learning to refine my method of using hypnosis and psychotherapy and thinking from hypnosis that informs my psychotherapy, regardless of whether or not I'm doing formal hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Could you share your own uh, understanding or definition of hypnosis? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I just wrote a paper and submitted it to the American Journal of Clinical Hypnosis, and basically my perspective was that hypnosis doesn't exist, and that hypnosis is a construct of convenience. It's a title that we put on our experience, and there's three components of experience, a contextual component, a psychological component, and an interpersonal component. So if we look at the phenomenology of hypnosis, we would say that hypnosis was composed of a context where you directly or indirectly define the situation as hypnosis. It's composed of a psychology. The psychology, the individual psychology, is that you change your attention, you modify your attentional processes, you um, modify the intensity of experience. So the intensity of experience becomes more or less vivid. There's a plasticity of experience. For example, relaxation could be more vivid. For example, the, time, the passage of time could be less vivid. And the third component, psychologically, is dissociation. Dissociation in three senses. Dissociation meaning that something just happens, like images just happen, memories just happen, or there's a sense of being a part of and apart from the experience, which would mean that there's a sense of being here and not here at the same time. Hypnotized people often say, well, I was here, I knew I was here, but I was there. I was involved in the imagery of the moment or I was involved in the memories. And also a sense of destabilization. So if you have a, a, a context defined as hypnosis, if you have changes that happen psychologically, a change in attention, a change in intensity, and a change in dissociation, and you combine that with a change in interpersonal responsiveness, the interpersonal side of hypnosis is that people start to respond to the implication of the communication. They start to respond to the meaning of the communication. They respond to the covert level. 
Now, if you take those five factors, defining the context, the three psychological changes, and the change in interpersonal responsiveness, and you put those together in some combination, what combination we can't say? Because some people just take, change their attention, they'll say, I'm hypnotized. Some people will start to have dissociative experience, they'll say, I'm hypnotized. Some people, you say, let's do hypnosis, you just define the context, and they say, okay, I'm in a trance. Some people need that interpersonal responsiveness to say, I'm in a trance. But if you have some combination of those things, people will say, they will title their experience, I'm hypnotized. And so hypnosis is a construct of convenience, but so is love. And so is curiosity, and uh, so is uh, good humor. They're just a construct of convenience. And by deconstructing hypnosis into its component parts, we can set into motion a series of events that we could call a hypnotic induction. And when people start to experience that series of events, then they will title their experience I'm hypnotized. So um, I think that it's wrong to think about hypnosis as a singularity. There's no singularity to love. There's no singularity to good humor. It changes over time, and the elements that compose good humor or love or hypnosis change over time. And so um, thinking about hypnosis as being a Mm, scientific fact is a very difficult and challenging thing to do. Hypnosis is more in the realm of a very personalized experience. You've seen a lot of uh, developments over say, 35 years of working at. Do you have some predictions for the future uh, as far as the field of hypnosis? Sure. The only prediction is that if you want a certain way of making a fool of yourself, just predict the future. <laughs>